Hi, I'm Rachel Gottlieb. I'm the inaugural curator of ceramics at the Crocker Art Museum. We're in the modern and contemporary ceramics galleries and we're actually in the Cowell Gallery. So I'm very excited here today um, to talk about what's been going on in the modern and contemporary galleries. We've had a refresh, a reinstallation um, over the last year and a half. And, um, and the reason for this is we wanted to highlight uh, recent acquisitions, new major um, donations from private collectors. So we wanted to tell the story of Studio Ceramics and how it unfolded in the 20th and 21st century. And specifically how it moved from functional pottery pottery that you could use for the table, and then how it became more sculptural and how artists um, really began to address particular issues such as um, the environment or trompe l'oeil or how they treated um, clay as a particular canvas. So in this gallery you're going to see a cornucopia of color and a whole variety of shapes and styles and different types of narrative. This is the gallery that is broken away from the dictates of functionalism and really focuses on clay and the medium of ceramics as a ceramic art form. But what I particularly wanted to look at um, today was this case where I'm standing, which I'm standing in front of. And you'll notice that there's a variety of different pots. They're either pots or vessels, but what they have in common is they somehow are related to the figure or the body form. And traditionally in the history of ceramics, across uh, time and place, there's always been this uh, reference that a pot it um, resembles the human form. So you can describe the bottom of the pot as a foot, you can describe the central part of the pot as a belly or a waist, and then you move up to the neck and to the lips and this um, spout. So there's always been that analogy that a pot is very close to the human form. And so what we see here um, with um, the artists working in the 20th and 21st century is that they're really riffing on this conceit that um, uh, a pot is equal to the human form. So let's take a look now at this case. Um, and you're going to, we're gonna start with the um, the bottom shelf and immediately to the right we see that the largest vessel on the, on the ground shelf and in fact the whole case is Rudy Audio's wonderful piece called Animal Fair. Now Rudy Audio has been called the Henri Matisse of ceramics for obvious reasons, the, how he expresses the nude form, his use of color um, is really what gives him that um, moniker of being the Henri Matisse of ceramics. But what's incredible about this vessel is really how shows how he's a master at really integrating surface decoration with the vessel form itself. And you see that the, the nude body, the female body, is entwined and wraps herself around that uh, monumental form and on the other side of the pot which you can see from the other side of the display case you'll see um, beautiful renditions of horses so Rudy Audio really takes advantage of that uh, form and he marries um, um, the, the imagery of the human form and animal form, that figurative imagery, with the traditional vessel form itself. The smaller pot is another example of Rudy Audio's work and he's exploring the same themes but on a smaller scale and again you can see how the nude and the animal motifs wrap around the vessel form. Rudy Audio um, uh, sadly passed away a few years ago. He was born and raised in Montana and he taught there for many, many years. And he was also very important for founding the um, Archie Bray Foundation, which is a really important school um, for ceramic residencies. Just to the right of uh, Rudy Audio's uh, pots 
are a collection of works by Akio Takamori. And you can see there's a big difference here um, compared to Rudy Audio's pots. Akio Takamori likes the flattened vessel form. He calls them envelope forms. He's a very, very strong in his treatment of graphic design. Uh, he um, has exotic nudes and you can see in that large vessel it's almost tree-like and you can see a whole canopy of, of, of uh, faces on top of uh, the vessel. So he's a very strong artist. He was uh, born and trained in Japan but he came over here to the United States in the 1970s. Now the last um, handful of objects I wanted to show um, in this case are by um, Adrian Sachs at the very far end. And what's wonderful about Adrian Sachs's work, and it, you can see the, the largest work is a gourd shape and it says yo on it. Adrian Sachs is based in LA. It's a very whimsical piece. He's not, he's creating the figurative form not through um, graphic design, not through drawing, but through um, the handles, our ears shaped as ears, and in fact, they look like spacers. He he has a lid that looks like a crown um, that is sort of topped with a wonderful finial. You can see um, two smaller works, uh, a bottle um, with, again, with handles and, and earrings dangling uh, from the handles, and then a jaunty teapot with, uh, again, with a wonderful uh, cap on top of his head. So that's a completely different approach in which to treat uh, the, the figurative element of the pot and with a lot of whimsy and, and humor and popular culture, which is so typical of Los Angeles. The very last two uh, vessels that I'd like you to look at in this um, case are on the top shelf, the top left corner, and they're by um, Christopher Gustin. And while they look sort of like, you know, biomorphic forms, um, abstracted forms, you can really see the body parts in them. They look like reclining nudes. And in fact, you, when you look carefully, you can see that the smaller vessel has a tiny opening around the belly. Uh, so that really puts it in the camp of being not figurative sculpture, but a vessel and the larger one has an opening as well. So come to the Modern and Contemporary Galleries and see this display case and so much more and you'll see these um, diverse approaches in how ceramic artists today treat clay either as a figurative uh, sculpture or as a clay canvas or as a functional pot to use.